happening right now at five. Major updates involving COVID-19 are happening in West Virginia. We have all the details coming up in just minutes. But first, after days of nothing but sunshine and humid temperatures, strong rains have returned to the Ohio Valley. Thanks for joining us for 7 News at 5. I'm Rebecca Little. And I'm Steve Moore. Let's take a live look outside tonight over Wheeling, where things are not quite where they're going to be, as far as I can tell, but looking pretty clear right now. But will the skies stay like this, or should we be expecting something a little nastier in the coming minutes? Well, let's not waste any more time and send it on over to Storm Tracker 7 Chief Meteorologist Dr. Dave Walker. Good evening, Doc. Well, good evening. At this point, we have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 10 p.m. Let's go to radar and show you the areas of greatest interest. At this point, as we head out to the north, we are looking at a severe thunderstorm wa warning, which is in effect until about uh, 5.15. And also, heading further to the south, we have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 5.30 and also a possible tornado warning. There does see, appear to be a little bit of rotation right now, not too far from New Athens, and this is heading down to the southeast, uh, maybe heading toward cold rain shortly, and it looks like the reflectivity is giving us a chance for some large hailstones as well. Also, a severe thunderstorm warning, which will end shortly down in Noble counties. At this point, we're looking at temperatures in the mid-70s to low. 80s and as we go through the evening hours the watch will expire probably before 10 p.m. We're expecting warm and humid conditions overnight and tomorrow is going to feature much nicer weather in our area. We'll be back with more on the weather in a couple of minutes. Let's head back to the news desk for now. Thank you, Doc. Our other top story tonight, more bad numbers for COVID-19 in West Virginia. Governor Jim Justice says he does not want to alarm people, nor should the public, but the state's COVID-19 numbers are getting worse. In the past day, there were 255 new cases. West Virginia now has more than 1,900 active cases. That's more than double the count on July 9th. And the Delta variant cases now stand at 100, which is a 125% increase since Tuesday. The Delta variant, we're told it's far more contagious and lethal. The Delta variant can be present in such high concentrations that people can get sick and can transmit potentially the disease who are fully vaccinated. In fact, 34% of the people who contracted the Delta variant in West Virginia were fully vaccinated. Tonight on 7 News at 6, we'll hear from Governor Justice and his new plan that may include booster shots for people who are already vaccinated. Ohio County Health Department Administrator Howard Gamble says that Governor Justice's announcement today about the battlefield assessment was news to him. Gamble says he has been forced or focused on the discussion about the booster program at a national level and the possibility of vaccinating the younger population. He says there are so many questions about this assessment that still have to be answered, like exactly which individuals 60 and older get tested or where does a person go to get a test? One question Gamble can answer is that if you are 60 or older and you take an antibody test that researchers are looking for more than a positive or negative result. Are you able to say in a, in a human body, what is the level of antibody? What is the level? Not just you have it present because right now you can go to a certain pharmacies and have an antibody test done, it'll show positive negative. But to get one that's more quantitative that says this is the exact level of either IgG or IgM in the system, you're able to say what is that level of protection to the individual. Gamble emphasizes that you must have a second COVID vaccination or at least six at least six months ago or longer before you could qualify to get the antibody test for this particular study. According to Howard Gamble, that is the amount of time it takes for our bodies to mount a response to the antibodies that have developed in our system. It is that response which will then show a certain level that researchers will use to gather their data. Well, the debate over remasking the cap at Capitol Hill is heating up. This comes as Congress's top doctor issued a new guidance for members of Congress as cases ramp up due to the Delta variant of COVID-19. 7 News Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson has a full look. House Republicans are blasting new guidance recommending vaccinated Americans wear masks indoors, including the halls of Congress. We are going to fight that. Ohio Congressman Brad Winstrup says the science is being politicized. If you're relying on Facebook or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris for your medical advice, you're going to the wrong place. Republicans say instead of enforcing masks, Democrats should be focused on other problems facing the country, like rising prices. Inflation is a tax on our middle and our working class families. 
Iowa Congresswoman Ashley Henson and Texas Congressman Tony Gonzalez say masks are only a distraction. We're going to be focused on one thing, securing our southern border and helping the American people. Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown says nothing should be more important than saving lives. I, I wish the people who have raised hell about masks would put some effort into getting their constituents vaccinated. Brown adds there's only one easy way to avoid mask mandates. If the unvaccinated would get vaccinated, we wouldn't have any need for masks. But Republicans worry making everyone wear masks will remove a major incentive for getting vaccinated in the first place. Not only does it contradict information they've already released, but it punishes Americans who've already done everything they were asked to do. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson. According to new CDC guidance, fully vaccinated individuals who've been exposed to someone with a virus should be tested three to five days after exposure. They should also wear a mask in public indoor settings for 14 days or until they receive a negative test result. In just a few days, the CDC's moratorium on evictions comes to an end, meaning no more protection for people who are behind on rent or their utilities. Courts have determined that the CDC's moratorium on evictions was un unconstitutional, so the likelihood of it being extended is slim. However, Wheeling attorney Tom McIntyre says there are several state agencies that can help in both Ohio and West Virginia. You can go up to 15 months with back rent to get assistance. He says that this will be a huge benefit for the tenant and the landlord. For anyone affected, McIntyre suggests reaching out to a state agency as soon as possible. You as a tenant need to contact your landlord immediately to snip this. Contact them and say, I'm struggling with my rent. I'm going to contact one of these uh, agencies that are being funded by the federal government and, um, and, and try to work it out. It's estimated that millions of people will be impacted when the protection expires. Ohioans can apply to receive assistance through their local community action agency. West Virginians should apply through the Mountaineer Rental Assistance Program. This next story is a case of some good news and some bad. The good news, two roads in Belmont County, Oakview and Pogue Road, are about to be rebuilt. Bad news is that at times they will be completely closed. DK Wright is live now with us in the 7 Newsroom to pick up the story from there. DK. Steve, this is in the area of Fox Commerce Park. That's the county's industrial park, and there are a lot of businesses there. The county's Transportation Improvement District secured grants to make this project happen. The project will start Monday while traffic is maintained, but that will change by the second and third weeks of August. So there'll be times that Pogue Road will be completely shut off or, or even Oakview. Uh, so we're wanting to let people know there will be detours posted. Uh, the businesses in there, uh, Shelling Sands is going to work with them to try to make sure they still have access to their businesses, but uh, we want people to be aware that it's going to be limited or closed. Larry Mary says he understands that people have to get to work and businesses have to stay open. He says Executive Road will have a detour out the south side of Fox Commerce Park to Pogue and then Airport Road and then back to the interstate or Route 40. He says this will start the week of August 9th and will probably continue for several weeks. DK Wright live in the 7 Newsroom working for you. Thanks, DK. The National Retail Federation predicts the average family with kids in elementary through high school will spend nearly $850 on back to school shopping. But this weekend, parents will have a chance to save money in West Virginia. The state sales tax holiday will start tonight at midnight and last until 11.59 p.m. on Monday. During the weekend, certain items are exempt from sales tax, including clothing, school supplies, instruction material, laptops and tablets, as well as sports equipment. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It's a great idea. Makes it makes it feel like less of a chore, you know, since they're less expensive. It's just like, oh, it's nice to have for the school year. There are purchase price limits on certain items, but no limit on the total purchase. Ohio sales tax holiday is August 6th through 8th. And it's hard to believe, but kids will be back to school before you know it. And you can head over to our website, WTRF.com, to see when your children are heading back to school. 
Town & Country Day's organizers are offering an open invitation to come out and enjoy the fair this year. The 2021 event is being held from August 9th through 14th at the Wetzel County 4-H Fairgrounds in New Martinsville. Organizers say they're working with the health department and will offer extra hand sanitizing and hand washing stations along with spraying down all of the bleachers in the seating areas. Organizers who have been busy putting the safety restrictions in place are expecting a great turnout. This fair is about bringing the town together and the country people together. It's the community. We've had people come from Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, everywhere come to our fair, and it's just nice. Yeah. It's so exciting to have it this year, um, to have the people come with their friends and their family. This is actually a lot of people's vacations, um, so it's just, it's just so exciting. Admission is $10 at the door. That covers the cost of carnival rides, entertainment, and track events. You can head over to their Facebook page for a full list of events and a chance at winning two season passes for free admission for the entire week. Well, now it's time for our daily senior salute where we honor a high school graduate who made it through a pretty unconventional senior year. And tonight we're honoring Morgan Palmer from Tyler Consolidated. A big congratulations to you, Morgan. Still to come on 7 News, with so many Americans still out of work, many are looking to start a brand new career, where some are turning to after the break. Doc? Watching two thunderstorm cells right now, tornado warnings in effect until about 515. More about that coming right up. Storm Tracker 7 live dual lace Doppler radar is detecting some rotation. National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for two spots. One is here, it does seem to be weakening, moving very slowly to the southeast. Uh, not just to the south of Harrisville, there's a possibility there might be some wind damage uh, heading toward uh, cold rain as we speak. The other spot we're watching is a tornado warning also in effect until about 515, which will expire in about two minutes. Seems to have lost some of its rotation, but it's better to be safe and sorry. Earlier in the afternoon there was trouble in Westmoreland County and there was some tree damage for sure with that. 
So we'll keep our eye on this. There's the one warning expiring in about one minute and the other one down here moving into Belmont County. Also a severe thunderstorm warning down in Noble. At this point in time, there's quite a range in temperatures. If you've had a rain, you're down in the mid 70s. Otherwise, you're in the low 80s. These showers will be ending and it looks like partial clearing overnight. Some patchy dense fog in some of our communities. Winds have been blowing generally out of the west and southwest. Haven't received any reports of severe weather in our area yet. There was some problems up in Benango County, Westmoreland, and Fayette counties earlier in the day. The blue line represents a cold front, which will be coming through the area in the next couple of hours, and hopefully we'll put an end to the severe weather threat. Here is our predictor for tomorrow, looking much better. Lower humidity, brighter skies, fantastic temperatures, struggling to get into the mid-70s. But we're still under the slight risk for severe storms in the area. Now, tomorrow's looking fantastic. Looking forward to some fantastic weather for Friday. Saturday looks great. As we get into Sunday, there's a chance that a disturbance will be moving through the eastern Great Lakes and could trigger off a few rain showers around here. There's your forecast for tomorrow. A lot to look forward to. And there we go with Friday. Heavy rain is uh, hitting our rooftop as uh, we speak. So let's go back to our Storm Tracker 7 Live Dual HD Doppler radar and back to the one tornado watch, warning, I should say. And it looks like that one has expired and it looks like we've lost the rotation associated with that cell. This one's still looking uh, troubling, especially as we look toward parts of, uh, well, the Burgholz area there in northern Jefferson County. This is where it's tracking. It's moving down to the south and east. We'll put a track on that at about 25 miles an hour and show you the towns that are likely to be affected. And there is a possibility you could have some wind damage for sure coming. Uh, right across the northern parts of Jefferson County, maybe all the way down to New Somerset and eventually down into uh, Richmond. Now you can always go to our website at WTRF.com to get the latest in the weather information. We're on Facebook and Twitter and on the WTRF mobile app. We're also on radio with Cool, Biggie, Willie, and WKKX, the Watchdog Network. Looking at the pollen forecast, well, it's going to be in the medium range over the next three days. Primary pollens are the grasses, plantain, and nettle. Thank you very much, Doc. Well, listen to this. Many Americans who lost work during the pandemic are considering new careers. And an environmental program is giving people a helping hand with free training for green jobs. Michael George shows us how. Hey, Doc, can you flip the monitor, please? Sarah Bejo just made a huge life change. She got a job installing solar panels, even though she has no experience in the field. It was a bit intimidating at first. It's a whole new industry. Sarah was a building manager in New York. Then the pandemic hit. I got furloughed due to COVID. Sarah heard about a program called Community Power, started by the city of New York along with several environmental groups like We Act and Solar One. It trains public housing residents at no cost to become certified solar panel installers. Um, solar jobs are it's a hot market right now, and our public housing residents are a great talent pipeline. So what are we looking at right here? This is a completed array on the northern side of this building here. The panels Sarah installs go right on the roof of New York's public housing buildings. So not only are people out of work being trained for green jobs, but the power generated by these panels is going right back into low-income communities. The people who live in these buildings get a savings of about $120 a year on their energy bills. It did not come out of our budget. Instead, we lease our roofs. And with the revenue that's generated from these solar leases, we can invest it back into public housing. For Sarah, the paycheck has been a godsend, and she's excited about her new career. It's the future. It's solar. It has been so rewarding in the fact that I feel like I'm making a difference every day I come to work. Using the power of people to bring power to the people. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Now this program is relatively small with panels installed on 40 buildings so far, but if it works in New York, organizers hope it will energize other cities to do the same. Well, the Delta variant during, is driving COVID cases around the world. What countries have the most after the break?
Welcome back. The Delta variant is causing a spike in COVID cases around the world. Many countries are breaking record numbers of new infections and deaths, while something different is happening to cases in the UK. Ian Lee has a look in your Health Watch 7 report. Tokyo hits yet another record number of new daily coronavirus cases as the Olympic Games continue. A Japanese official said Thursday they've never experienced a rise in infections like this. Around the world, the Delta variant is fueling the surge. Russian officials blame it for a record number of new daily deaths. While down in Australia, Sydney has turned into a ghost town. Officials extended the city's lockdown after a sharp rise in cases. We can only assume that things are likely to get worse before they get better. The UK fully reopened earlier this month despite a spike in cases, but now new infections are plummeting. And scientists here don't know why. Could it be fewer large sporting events, people not wanting to get tested, or as some have suggested, the UK is reaching herd immunity? It is very. The U.S. recently announced the delivery of more than one million vaccine doses via the U.N.'s COVAX Global Initiative aimed at supplying low- and middle-income countries. Coming up next, Doc will have a final look at your weather. We'll be right back. The tornado warning out for parts of Belmont and Harrison County has expired at this point, but we are still looking at a thunderstorm which is uh, showing some rotation now in northwestern parts of Jefferson County. It's heading down to the south and the east at about 20 miles an hour. And the circle there shows where the rotation is the greatest and now it continues to track down to the south and east. and. Since we have time, I think I'll just redo the track on this particular cell. The most dangerous part of the cell can be spotted with our um, storm relative vorticity. So at this point, the uh, thunderstorms, the radars have detected some rotation in this area. And I can show you how it's been over the last 15 minutes. And if you're anywhere near this, there's a possibility you're going to get some wind damage. It's been tracking down to the south and east at about uh, 25 miles an hour. So I'll take the latest radar view here. 
and we'll just track this down to the south and east at about 25 miles an hour. Now, this is a radar detected tornado. It doesn't necessarily mean there is one out there, but we definitely see the rotation. And these are the towns which will shortly be affected. You can see uh, Richmond, possibly down to the north side of uh, Wintersville. It's still holding together fairly well, and we'll have to keep our eye on this over the next uh, 15 minutes. National Weather Service out of Pittsburgh is uh, looking at it very carefully right now, wondering whether they should extend it as it heads toward Richmond. Most of us, though, are um, not dealing with the possibility of a tornado, pretty heavy rains there. We'll have more weather coming up a little bit later. Let's head back to the news desk for now. Thank you, Doc. That is all the time we have for 7 News at 5. West Virginia Tonight is next. We'll see you back here in a half hour for 7 News at 6.